How do you design a machine vision system capable of recognizing objects in images and then suggesting similar images based on these objects? Then how do you scale it to serve millions of users in real time like Google Lens? Google Lens is a visual search tool that lets users identify objects, products, landmarks, and more simply by pointing their camera. Behind this seamless user experience are two major technical challenges. First, how do you develop and train a reliable machine vision model to handle this task? And second, how do you deploy and scale that model to support millions of daily users in a cost-effective and responsive way? This type of system design question is not only a great topic for interviews, it also applies broadly to a range of real-world applications. On screen, you will see the target architecture we're going to build. As you can see, it is built on AWS and not Google Cloud Platform as AWS is much more popular in industry and your interviews are more likely to be AWS based. All AWS services have a Google Cloud Platform alternative. Hey everyone, I'm Sean from TryAccept. If you find this helpful, be sure to support us at tryaccept.io and don't forget to subscribe and leave any questions in the comments. Also please like. We need to understand what we're building, so let's define the scope and requirements. To do this, we will split our requirements into functional and non-functional. So we only have two functional requirements, but both are complex. Users must be able to capture or upload an image and initiate a search to identify similar images or objects within that image. The system should analyze the image and return a ranked list of the most likely similar images or objects and also their relevant web pages. There are only two core functional requirements, but both are technically challenging. The system needs to accurately interpret visual input and efficiently deliver high quality relevant search results in real time. So onto the non-functional requirements. The system must consistently return responses for all valid requests, ensuring dependable performance under varying conditions. Users should experience minimal delay between submitting an image and receiving results, ideally under 100 milliseconds to maintain a smooth and responsive experience. The architecture must support horizontal scaling to handle large volumes of concurrent requests without performance degradation. The system should be designed for high availability with redundancy and failover mechanisms in place to ensure minimal to no downtime. To understand the scalability needs of this system, let's make some rough, high-level estimates. We're going to assume there are 50 million registered users with 10 million daily active users. Each active user performs an average of three image searches per day. Each image uploaded is about one megabyte in size, resulting in 30 million image queries per day. This translates to an average of roughly 350 queries per second. As a result, we expect the peak to be roughly 700 queries per second. We aim to train on roughly 50 million images. Each image is approximately one megabyte in size, requiring 50 terabytes of space. So we're going to do something new. I have not done this in any other video. We're going to define the machine learning task. We will identify the objective, the input and output, as well as a potential model category suited for this task. We will frame this task as a similarity task, specifically image similarity. That is, we need to retrieve images and rank them in similarity to the user submitted image. Success will be measured in two forms, online and offline. Online refers to user interactions with the model and offline refers to simulated performance. Online success, which is ultimately more important, will be measured in terms of click-through rate. When we suggest a set of images, we want the user to click one of those images and continue to the website hosting that image. This is more important as it reflects real world usage and it is ultimately what the business cares about. Click through rate is defined as the number of clicked images divided by the total number of suggested images. During train test splitting, we will evaluate the ranking quality of our model's predictions using NDCG or normalized discounted cumulative gain. 
Since our model outputs a ranked list of images, we want highly relevant images to appear at the top of that list. Here's how it works. DCG or discounted cumulative gain sums the relevant scores of the predicted images applying a logarithmic discount based on their position in the list. So for example, higher ranked items contribute more to the score. Because DCG can vary depending on the list and scores, we compute NDCG, by dividing the model's DCG by the ideal DCG, the DCG of a perfectly ranked list. This normalization ensures that scores are always between zero and one, where one indicates a perfect ranking. That's a bit complicated. Simply put, NDCG tells us how good our model is at putting the most relevant images at the top of the list, it gives higher scores when important results show up earlier, and it scales the score between 0 and 1, so that we can easily compare performance between train test splits. Okay, so inputs and outputs. The user will provide as an input a single image. The machine learning system as an output will provide a ranked list of images similar to that input image. Now for the machine learning category and model. This task is well suited for representation learning. Representation learning is a type of machine learning where a model automatically learns to extract and encode meaningful features called embeddings. These embeddings are placed on a multi-dimensional plane called the embedding space, which allows a system to perform tasks such as recommendation, ranking, and search. Simply put, the model creates data points which represent each image on a plane. We can then use this plane to measure similarity between images. A vision transformer based model is a strong candidate for this task in this field. We will now go through the architecture, detail the tools and services utilized, as well as various ML tasks occurring at each architecture point. So first up, we have data collection. As per our rough estimations, we need to collect millions of images. While pre-existing datasets like Google's JFT are commonly used in industry, for the purpose of this video, we'll assume we are starting from scratch. Our approach involves using a large-scale web scraper to gather images along with their associated metadata. This metadata may include image captions, alt text, file names, geolocation data, surrounding text on the web page. Although web scraping systems can be quite complex, featuring components like distributed crawling, deduplication, throttling, and error handling, we will abstract those details away. In our architecture diagram, we'll represent the web scraper as a single high-level module for simplicity. To store this data, we will leverage AWS S3 buckets for images and a cloud-based MongoDB instance for the metadata. We have chosen MongoDB for its support of document style data, its high level of consistency, and also ability to partition. Here is an example entry into the MongoDB database. With our dataset collected, the next step is to prepare it for model training. This involves transforming and normalizing the images to ensure consistency, reduce noise, and improve model performance. Since the model expects a standardized image input, we apply the following pre-processing steps. Resizing. All images are resized to a fixed resolution of 600 by 600 pixels to ensure uniform input dimensions. Pixel value scaling. Pixel intensities are scaled to the range 0 and 1. Z-score normalization. We standardize pixel values by applying Z-score normalization so they have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. This helps the model learn more effectively, especially in deeper networks. Color mode standardization. All images are converted to a consistent RGB format to eliminate issues arising from differing color encodings. Aspect ratio handling. To avoid distortion during resizing, we can apply center cropping or padding to preserve the original aspect ratio before resizing to 600 by 600. Image denoising. In cases where web scraped images contain noise or compression artifacts, we apply denoising filters to clean the data before feeding it to the model. This transformation job will be conducted by AWS Lambda. Lambda can execute when a new image is added to the source S3 buckets and horizontally scales. 
meaning if 100 files are added to the source bucket, 100 Lambda instances will run concurrently to process those 100 files. This ends up being very cost effective compared to batch jobs. We will now once again store this data in AWS S3 buckets and will update the MongoDB record to contain the S3 post-process path for each new image. So now on to model training. So a question you're probably asking right now is where is the ground truth? How do we know what's similar or dissimilar? Well, in this task, we can actually generate our own ground truth without any human labeling. By duplicating a training image and applying augmentations, like cropping, flipping, or color changes, we create altered images that are different, but still semantically similar to the source image. These augmented views become what we call positive pairs. They show the model what similar looks like. We then treat other images in the batch as negative pairs to the source image, helping the model understand what's dissimilar. This way we're giving the model a clear signal about similarity, allowing it to learn rich and useful representations on its own. This process is called contrastive learning. What type of model will we train? We will train a VIT model, otherwise called a vision transformer. It is a type of neural network designed to process images using a similar transformer architecture that revolutionized language models like GPT. Instead of looking at images like a grid of pixels in the way CNNs do, VITs treat an image like a sequence of patches, almost like treating an image like a sentence made of visual words. For a more in-depth analysis of the model, visit tryaccept.io. So let's get incredibly technical and define the loss function the model leverages. We will utilize NTZent, or normalized temperature scaled cross entropy. This pulls our positive image pair embeddings closer together and pushes all other images further apart. This helps the model better understand what is similar and what is dissimilar. So each output embedding will be stored in a vector database. We will ensure the ID for each image's vector is the same as the ID in MongoDB in case we need to do some cross-querying between the databases. Okay, so now we have laid the groundwork to store the image embeddings in a vector database. Essentially, this means the position of all images can be mapped, but we do not yet have the framework to extract ranking of similarity between images. Typically, vector stores have a similarity search built in, but let's pretend we have to build our own. We will utilize a KNN to find the K most similar images. This leverages cosine similarity as its similarity index. So to do this training, we will leverage AWS SageMaker. This is a managed service that enables distributed training on GPUs. If you want more control, it is totally possible to use Amazon EC2 instances instead. For a vector database, we will utilize a cloud-based WeV8 vector DB, partitioned and sharded for scalability. To track the offline performance of the model during the train test splitting, the platform weights and biases is implemented. To store the output model, we can leverage AWS SageMaker's model registry, which will allow us to version and add metadata to each model. Okay, so onto the serving layer. The embedding service will take the user input image and leveraging the VIT model will embed it. This can be implemented utilizing SageMaker as it supports model inference. This embedding will be passed to the K nearest neighbor service, which will produce a list of the K nearest neighbor images for the user image embedding. Once again, this can be implemented utilizing SageMaker as it supports model inference. The API will be implemented using Fast API. This is the industry standard for ML-based microservices right now. We will horizontally scale this across EC2 instances. It will have one endpoint, search, which will be a post operation. The content type will be multi-part form data and contain one important argument. 
the image. The horizontally distributed API instances are placed behind a load balancer which will evenly distribute load across the instances and implement redundancy strategies in the event of an instance or a group of instances going down. Redis caching will be utilized to store the most frequently requested images and responses. Okay, so let's quickly go through a request response flow. When a user submits a query, it first reaches the load balancer which routes the request to one of the available fast API instances. The selected fast API instance then forwards the query to the embedding service, which generates a vector representation embedding of the input. This embedding is sent to the KNN service, which retrieves a list of similar images based on the embedding. Finally, the list of similar images is returned to the fast API instance, which delivers the response back to the user. Okay, so that's it from me today at Try Accept. Your homework is to implement logging in telemetry. Let me know how you do it in the comments down below.